Meet Arnold. What a beautiful day. What could possibly ruin this? Well, what if the Earth suddenly stopped? At a full stop, due to inertia, all objects will fly east, reaching a speed of more than 1,500 kilometers an hour. Also, atmospheric disturbances will create strong winds. But at the same time, don't forget, the gravity of the Earth will remain the same. The momentum of the oceans and seas will create giant tsunamis, absorbing 27 kilometers of land per minute. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, makes a full circle around the sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface is deadly dangerous. Arnold, I swear, you're like a moss piglet the way you survive disasters. You need to find shelter. I suggest you move to the equator where it's safest. Hurry, Arnold, you can catch the last bus to the catacombs. Now everyone has moved under the surface of the Earth. Don't worry, these are real cities with improved security. You can even grow food here. What an adventure, Arnold! Leaders of all the countries have agreed to completely get rid of lithium, oil, and uranium. Now, nothing can threaten the environment. But, hmm, how are we supposed to get energy without fossil fuels? Humans use 150 petawatt hours of energy every year. To produce that much, 200 billion solar panels covering an area of 3.7 trillion square feet will be needed. This is 3.7% of the Sahara Desert's area. If the entire desert is covered in panels, we would get 27 times more energy than we need. But this would cost five quadrillion dollars. It's easier to solve this problem using brute force. What's that you have there, Arnie? A lithium battery. Now you, Arnie, along with all the other environmental violators, will have to generate energy yourselves. But there is one problem. If the entire population of the Earth keeps pedaling all year round without stopping, we'll only generate 10.5 petawatt hours of energy. That's just 7% of how much we need. To meet our needs, we need 125 trillion people pedaling eight hours every day. Eight hours on the bike and your punishment is over. You moron, you didn't connect the winch. Don't you know how gravitational batteries work? If you lift a weight to a great height and then release it, the energy stored in it will be released. This energy can be converted into electrical energy. For example, to store one kilowatt, you need to lift a weight of 2,000 pounds to a height of 1,320 feet. This energy is enough to play a console game for about an hour and a half. So, the idea of getting rid of fossil fuels has been a complete failure. Now, due to this, people have turned into animals. We could have just stayed closer to nature. But now, everyone needs energy. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. 
And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. Man, the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. Not how I imagined everything. Due to a volcanic eruption, the sky is filled with dense clouds and humanity has found itself without the sun. Interesting. How long can you live like this? A billion people suffer from vitamin D deficiency. If the sun disappears, then after seven days, half the population will suffer from acute depression, and there'll be a 75% increase in the risk of getting cancer. There'll be a 32% increase in cases of stroke, and it'll become twice as easy to get diabetes. Therefore, better stock up not on canned food, but on vitamins. Without the sun, there's no reason to live on the surface anymore, so everyone moves underground and adapts to this new existence. Nutrition is in the hands of science and technology. Scientists create mushroom and hydroponic farms capable of growing a variety of products. And with a 3D printer, you can quickly print out your favorite dishes. Without sunlight, the human brain can't distinguish between day and night. Your hormones go haywire. And there's a sharp rise in obesity. When the hormone leptin, responsible for appetite, is reduced by 80%, the daily portion portion of food will increase by almost half, 44%, and this will lead to extra weight. Hey, I'm not sure you can go there. Everything looks like in movies about superheroes. A long corridor, a secret laboratory, and here's the solution. All this turns out to be a global experiment. Who's behind all of this? Come on, Arnold, defeating this strange main villain, you can save the planet. Vitamin D helps in the assimilation of calcium, essential for healthy bones. If it's deficient, your bones become weak and fragile. That's why when you're walking, your feet feel like rubber. And under conditions of complete darkness, your chance of getting a fatal fracture is doubled. Arnold, you're a real hero. You've returned all mankind to a normal life. But knowing your propensity for star fever, this could be dangerous. Let's go back. Stereotypes. In childhood, you already saw a gray alien with a big head and black eyes. That was your mother. Babies always have astigmatism, so the first face they see looks like that. Astigmatism gradually fades away, but the image of the humanoid remains in the subconscious. Wow, there's so much cool stuff here. Innovative technologies, cures for incurable diseases, 
answers to eternal questions. Arnie, do you even know what aliens look like? Well, you're about to find out. Life exists thanks to natural selection. All creatures strive to pass their genetic code on to the next generation. If evolution proceeds the same way everywhere, then aliens should look like us. Well, maybe with some differences. Wow, what a beautiful girl! With deadly jaws! Run, Arnold! She's stronger than a grizzly bear. And here's salvation for her. Arnie, the sheriff is unlikely to believe a guy with such a hairstyle. And of course, no UFO will be found. But you seem obsessed with aliens. Arnold, everyone thinks you're crazy because reptilians don't exist. Scientists think that aliens look something like this. Meet the Octomite, a collective mind consisting of living organisms. It lives underground with its crown protruding outside and digests light through photosynthesis. The appendages below give birth to larvae, which turn into butterflies and pollinate the main organism. Hmm, the psychiatric hospital changed you in just one day. Hooray! You know too much, so you're being invited to join the FBI. They'll reveal all the UFO secrets to you. That's suspicious. Of course. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready. To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold, green. I doubt that any of the astronauts are gonna rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't gonna do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's gonna stay in one place. So here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy in just 60 seconds could carry you as far as three kilometers, but this will significantly reduce your air supply. So let's move on to the second option, burrito. You wrapped it in foil and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of three meters per second and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? You're gonna have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. Ooh. The average distance from Earth to the moon is 384,467 kilometers, and every year the moon moves three and a half centimeters further away. In the entire history of humanity so far, only 12 people have stepped on the surface of the moon. You will be the 13th. I agree, it's not the luckiest number, but just imagine, there'll be no one on the moon except for you. True, this ain't Miami. The temperature is minus 173 degrees Celsius. And everywhere you go, there's radiation 200 times higher than on Earth. So you can't do it without a spacesuit. But in the meantime, as a tourist, you can check into the hotel. Although construction isn't slated until 2025. Let's go to the far side of the moon. 
Especially because there's a bunch of cool equipment left there by astronauts. Arnold, jump into the lunar rover, start the engine, and drive. Believe it or not, there are a few lunar seas. Only, they're not filled with water, but solidified lava. Arnold, wrong pedal! Hit the brake! Congratulations, Arnold. You just smashed into the U-22 Chinese lunar rover. And you damaged your spacesuit. Oh, no. Houston, we have a problem. Don't worry, Arnold. Help is on the way. True, it's gonna take them three days to get here. And try to conserve your oxygen. Good luck, Arnold. Great news, buddy. You're saved. But you lost a ah. finger. Arnold, you're now a true hero. That's why NASA's giving you a free ticket to Mars. Departure in three hours.